Another ransom note? What does it say? You messed me around. The deal's off. You can forget about ever seeing Amber and Trudy again. You are joking. Let me see. Do you think I would joke about something like that? Welcome to Series 3, Episode 41 of Conversation in Mountain, a podcast about the tribe. I'm your host, Lance, and joining me podcast panel today is Liz. Hello. And Maggie. Hey. If episode notes done by Matt and myself. So Series 3, Episode 41, the screenplay was done by Carrie Rose. It was directed by John Reed. And the episode synopsis were read out by Maggie. A failed ambush brings Bray and Pride into conflict. Ellie and Luke face the fallout of their relationship becoming public, and Ebony plays games with Ned. So yeah, a lot of fun bits in this episode, but let's start with the aftermath of the previous episode. I'm sorry things didn't go as planned yesterday. Why did I listen to him? Why didn't I just follow my gut instincts that it was a crazy plan bound to fail? Hey, Bray can be very persuasive. (laughs) You can't blame yourself. But I do. It's not like me to be persuaded when I know something's wrong. Especially when it involves someone I... Love? Care about. So yeah, let's get into that. Um, how do you feel about Pride's frustrations coming to the front here? And obviously May trying to play the long game with him. Um, I mean, it, again, I don't like how Pride went from being totally cool with Brain and Amber's relationship and then only when she decided not to go back to the Gaians, he suddenly has an issue with it. I, you think you the way he's behaving, you would think that this was his child and that he and Amber had come to some agreement that he'd have a place in his child's life and she reneged. Mm-hmm. That, that that's Ooh. how he's behaving. You know what I mean? Like he is acting yeah. like because she he was one of the first people outside of Trudy that she told about the baby. And so can't rule out what they talked about. And that sudden turn in his attitude towards Bray, who he was always very supportive of and um, just this bitter, he's just a bitter ex at this point. And it's like, where did that come from? Yeah. Um, I don't care for that. But if they'd always shown that he was a little upset that Amber had lied to him and then broke his heart and then went back to this guy and he's looking at him and thinking this, this is who you left me for then I think this would all work a lot better. But what we're dealing with, fine. Um, Yeah, sure, of course. If Pride looks at Bray as inferior and he wants Amber back, he never agreed with Bray's plan in the first place. Again, it was never a conflict for Pride because what Amber wanted didn't matter to Pride. Just getting her back is what mattered. Um, Yeah. he He should be upset. So, you know, I'm like, I'm okay with that. Like, he should be mad. Um... I thought, hey, May, if you're going to play your cards right to try and get this guy, this is the way to do it, you know? She's sneak doing in, well. Yeah. yeah, she's sneak under the fence when his, <laughs> his guard is low and he's vulnerable, offer to be a friend. That comfort. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, she's going about it the right way. If you want the guy, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Make him emotionally dependent friend. on you, you know what I mean? <laughs> Emotional support, May. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, oh validate how he feels and you know and yeah like this is how you do it <laughs> so i like to hate the game not the player you know what i mean like uh i was gonna say yeah you can't you can't blame her for <laughs> shoot she's shooting a shot you know mm-hmm. yeah it's not like she's double crossing anyone to do it neither mm. of them are in a relationship he's free yeah, gay true. so mm-hmm. go for it girl from the three-point line hey. i know you can do it go <laughs> <laughs> It'd be different if he was in a relationship or she was, or if doing this was going to screw over somebody, then it'd be like, what the frick, May? That ain't cool. But it's who's it mm-hmm. harming if she yeah. tries to wiggle in yeah. there? Come on. Yeah, she is finally like doing something that's not going to harm 
from somebody else, you know. Yeah, it's not slimy. Getting her way. No, it's not. not this, is what, this is what we all do. We like somebody and we want them to like us. What do we do? We try to get to know them. We try to get close to them. We try to spend time with them. Be we nice. listen to them. Yeah, we're nice to them. Mm -hmm. We listen to them. I mean, <laughs> go for it. Good luck. <laughs> A little, that little smile, a little smirk from Pride after, you know, at the end as she walked away. You, you know she's charming. You know she's got moves. Absolutely. It's not that he doesn't find her attractive, like, physically. You know, it's it's just more, I, that's not the kind of person I want to spend my life with. We don't want the same things, blah, 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 you know. But uh, a booty right. call? He's totally up for that. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure it does something for his ego that... She's willing to chase him. Oh, abs absolutely. Yeah. I mean, especially after what he just went through with Amber. Like, <laughs> he, he, he's hardcore in the rebound territory right now, you know? <laughs> so, he's, he's prime. Which is sad, though, you know, because it's sad. That, that makes me a little sad for me, I guess. Because, yeah. yeah, she's shooting her shot, you know? But in the end, what does she end up being? She ends up being a rebound. A disposable one. That's all she ever ends up being. Yeah. Yes, ab absolutely, you know. And then comes in, you know who, you know. And no. she's the one that really, I don't know. It's not May. And that's what makes me a little bit, a little bit for her. Because she really is genuine right now. Like she mm -hmm. cares for pride. She wants to, she really wants to get to know. Her. And maybe she does deserve a little bit of redemption, you know? Yeah, I, I feel the same way. It's not that I think, oh, pride, you owe her some kind of relationship because she likes you so much. Right. It's more no. that yeah. if you don't actually like her, then don't don't give her any encouragement and don't do what you're going to do because you're doing you're going to do to yes. her exactly what was done to you. Mm, you know, that part. You're going to lie to her and take comfort in her because you're running away from your feelings over another situation. And then you're going to be like, you're going to leave her high and dry and just keep playing with her emotions. And it's like, you already know how that feels and you're about to do it to someone else, you know? Um, okay. I get, I get Pride's, fr like Pride's frustration with the whole, like the plan. But if he, if he had known, why did he go with, you know, along with it? And, and I, I feel like I would understand where he's coming from a little bit more if it hadn't been set up beforehand that he was just throwing a temper tantrum that he didn't get his way yeah because that's that's what it looked like and if that's what it was all along that's what they should have you know portrayed to us yes i agree see that's what colors it it doesn't feel like there's any honor in his position because he went from exactly. being exactly. so supportive and not having any kind of grudges and only had good advice for bray you know and all of a sudden he has he's acting like this jaded ex and Bray yes, stepped in yes. and it was like what you're lashing out at and Bray. And we're supposed to believe that him and Amber were never serious? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh god, yeah. This is the thing. <laughs> when he's acting like this, like you just it's hard not to think like come on, you've tried you've tried to scrub this writer so much but there must have been something. How can there not have been? Like this isn't he isn't acting like he's lost a friend or even a tribe leader. He's acting like he has lost his lover. And the way he's trying to get her back, I, I don't know. It's just, I just can't believe that nothing happened. There's it's definitely something happened between them two. <laughs> yeah. Well, she gave him her ring. Yeah. <laughs> that whole ceremony and a ring. Like, come on, writers, man. You've tried to walk this back, but. <sighs> We've done this twice now. It's Tyson and Guardian, too. You know, they're married. So. <laughs> she was going to run away with Sasha. She never gave him her ring. You know what yeah. I mean? That was someone she was literally going yeah, to run yeah. away with. She <laughs> and she didn't give him any jewelry that belonged that was special to her. Give me a break. Like she only gives that when she's like, I'm in I'm mm -hmm. seriously in love with you, you know? Um, so I, I just <sighs> I'm like, Pride, that's why that's why I'm telling you, that's why I always I did that whole theory of Pride being the baby daddy. Because I'm like, I was trying to make sense of this. What is he so pissed about? Uh, don't do that to me. I'm like, it, if he was mad about losing Amber, we would have seen signs of it long before she chose not to go back to the Gaians, you know? And you're never going to convince me that all of this is because he lost his leader. No, you'll never no. convince me. Mm -hmm. This doesn't, no, you know? Um, and so I was just like, nah, he's, he's mad because she promised uh, you'll be in your child's life and then changed her mind and... Uh, it's so messy. He's like, how dare you? How dare you? 
Can you imagine that twist on the show? <laughs> it would be insane. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's something that would have to happen after season five when they totally massacred Amber's character. <laughs> like, it would be oh. something that oh, yeah, would come no. out then. Yeah. 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 Because they'd never do it now, because right now she's their golden <laughs> child. And they'd be like, oh, that would make her look terrible. But I bet it, if they had continued, this would have been a season <laughs> six reveal. <laughs> he hates it. Because by then they had all new favorites. <laughs> I just, I don't understand why it has to be you that looks after that freak all the time. Why can't somebody else have a turn? That'd be nice. Are you offering? Hey, hey, whoa now. Well, it would stop us having rows over him. And instead of creating a rift between us... Might even bring us closer together. Hey, no, this is this is pushing it to us, man. So yeah, panel. I, I, this thing made me look. This scene made me laugh. I, it wasn't quite that. This genuine outpouring of <laughs> love and compromise that kind of I was expecting to be built up. Like, <laughs> what did you make of it? <laughs> That's marriage, what a right there. Woman. <laughs> <laughs> you, you said it right. That is marriage. <laughs> That's marriage, right there. Yeah. Oh man, just sh- uh, Tyson. I mean, she's in the character. It's her. It's who she is. I mean, well played, Tyson. Yes. Well played. Yeah, no, but... she, she knew. Ah. I, I, I really couldn't say much more about it. I was like, yeah, those are the, that's what you got to do in marriage. I, that's what it just reminded me. I was like, that, that, that's <laughs> two people who have been doing this for a while. Um, Lex is in that perfect camp of happy wife, happy life attitude. Mm. Like, he's able to express, okay. like, a difference of opinion. Like, I'm not 100% sure Bray did do the right thing. Uh, except, but he's good enough not to be in Bray's face about it and making him feel worse because he actually does seem to care uh, yeah. about his friend. His friend doesn't need him to do that because oh, his friend is sweet. Oh. Yeah. He's, like, Thank you. So yeah, I'll be like he, that. What sorry. he said. Mm-hmm. Oh, what he said about Bray. Yeah, yeah, like you know, you did what you thought was right, man. Like I did like seeing that. It was a nice payoff to how good Bray has been to him through season three and mm-hmm. how supportive. And he's had his back and he's helped talk him to off the ledge several times. He's protected him. So it was just nice to see that that's come somewhere where Lex also has his back. Even if he doesn't agree with what he did, he's not going to kick him when he's down because he still understands. He feels like crap already. He already knows he made this choice. It didn't work out. He doesn't need me to say, yeah, you screwed up. He needs a friend. He needs support. You know, right. so I really like that. And in his private moment with his wife, he's like, yeah, I, I don't think he did the best thing. I don't know if it was the best thing for him to do. I wouldn't have been able to do that, you know, and maybe principles aren't the most important thing in the world where, you know, Tyson's like, I do believe principles are the most important world. I think they both have good points there. And um, I, I like the way this conversation <laughs> goes. I was no, like, this was great. A, it was wonderful. There's a lot of manipulating happening in some of these relationships. <laughs> But it's not like an you know e- it just it it's not an evil manipulation. Yeah. No, like no, I no, said, no. it's it's a very it's, yeah. Mm-hmm. You've been in a relationship, and it's like okay, I will admit it'd be great if I didn't have. I like even the way Lex broaches it. Does it always have to be you instead of the normal talking yes, voice that yes. he was using? Where like ah, why are you doing this? It was like, does it have to be you? And she's able to admit, well, it'd be great if I didn't have to take care of him. You know, and then he, you know, and then she gets that spark in her eye, and like, like, oh no, Uh I'm in trouble. Just, I shot myself in the foot with that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just another one of those conversations that show us that they really are very good for each other. Mm -hmm. She's able to get him to see without pushing him, I guess. By him saying, "Is it? Does it always have to be you?" I feel like in that moment, she's like, "Okay, he kind of gets it." I did love how Lex didn't protest much. He was like, no, she she no. just gently guided him to the bed. He was, he was like, oh, no, this is not right. She's like, is it? Yeah. Like, and, and, that's, and that's, that's the best part about them, you know. Like, I just think they, they meld well they together. They do. That's Men. what's so great about it. They just work so well together. <laughs> and it feels like they know each other. That's exactly it. I know how much you love Amber. Please don't. Look, Bray, you and I have been through so much with each other. Fought and hated. But at the end of the day, I care. And I'm here for you. So yeah, panel, we're back to Ebony's scheming. How do we feel about this? Hey, I'm just glad to see her doing anything. So bring it. Yes, yes. (laughs) She's been missing for a long time. It's good Mm -hmm. to have scheming Ebony back. I can't lie. (laughs) Like, ooh, yay. It's like, oh, she's been in hibernation because there, were, there was just no room for a great antagonist. 
you know, I mean, it was supposed to be the Guardian, I had but Ned. They, they, they killed it. <laughs> Ned is not a good antagonist. He <laughs> sucks. He's, he's like... We have McDonald's. No, he's the we have McDonald's at home antagonist. Okay, <laughs> that's Ned. <laughs> he's the wish and the wish version. Wish. Yes, and it was like, okay, finally we have a decent antagonist mm. who's going to shake things up, make them interesting, even make us maybe hate her for how far, far she's going to go. Um, so I was just like, yes, <laughs> yes, this is what I've been needing. I was like, do your thing, girl. I, I almost, I also, I can't know how to explain this, but because she's a good antagonist and she's a competent antagonist when the writers let her be one, I suddenly wasn't worried about Amber and Trudy so much because I knew it wasn't an Am it wasn't an Amber's interest. I mean, sorry, it's not in Ebony's best interest to do anything to them. It's so I was like, okay, no matter how she drags us out, I know they'll be fine. We're just going to have yes, one heck of yes. a ride before they get back. Oh, yeah. So I was just like, okay, I'm on board with this adventure. <laughs> Let's go. I also thought it was clever uh, for the writers. Clearly, they were working around Antonia and Beth um, not being able to be there. So how do you drag out the kidnapping? If you have set it up that the only reason Ned kidnapped them was to get the Guardian, and you're only able to stall it so much by having Bray have a dilemma where he doesn't want, you know, want to break Amber's word, blah, blah, blah. And that goes awry. Well, you knew, you, we all knew that as soon as, you know, Ned gave him another note and gave him another chance, that this time Bray was definitely going to hand over the Guardian and then the girls would come back. But in real life, the girls couldn't come back yet. So if you're going to drag out the storyline, they're kidnapping, bringing Ebony into it, brilliant way to work with what you've got going in your real life. Like, I thought that was yeah. well done. Like, okay, it makes mm -hmm. sense that the kidnapping is going to drag out now that you have Ebony there, someone who has, like, more interesting and important motivations for why she'd get involved. I actually really felt bad for Bray, the way he responds to the note. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Like, the way he just, wow, he checks out. And, I mean, I don't blame him, you know, the Bray has been through so much crap and so much loss that he's never actually been able to process properly. And this time he just, it, oh man, I, I'd never seen him that despondent so immediately. It's like a state of shock. Like everything just seized. Like there's yeah, no hope. For sure. And you're like, dude, it's not over. Like call, chill. And no, it's done. It's over. I, I can't take anymore. I can't take anymore. It's over. I've lost everything. I screwed up. And there is no fixing this. And oh boy, <laughs> I was like, "Sweetie, sweetie, chill. <laughs> <laughs> don't you don't, don't aren't you a suspect that suddenly the kidnappers wouldn't want the guardian anymore? What are they going to do with the girls? What what would they want with them? They wanted the guardian. Like that he can't think outside of this black hole. He literally just fell right into it. Like oh man, I felt for him. I did. <laughs> I mean, and just yeah, to finish it off. Like, did did you like that? Ebony suddenly remember that she liked Bray again. I don't even think it's about liking Bray. I think it's more just she knows how to play him. Yeah, she, she knows what he needs. And she doesn't intend to hurt him or anything like that. And she's not trying to get him from Amber. She's playing. You don't think? The, no, no. Like from here on, she doesn't show any actual interest in Bray like that. Not romantically. No, and I think you know? she's. Yeah. Like right now, she's well, totally. She knows him. him. Yeah. Like, if he yeah. came back for season four, maybe, who knows. But right now, like, I didn't get any sense that this was about trying to get Bray. Like, she's got, we know her one goal is power first, then maybe love later. Like, that's just the way she rolls. And so, if there's even an inkling that she liked Bray again, it won't be until she gets her power, until she <laughs> gets her right. throne back. Yeah. So, like, I don't, she's just doing what she needs to do to keep him in that nice, false that lull of security that she's always able to get Bray into, you know, playing a supportive friend, playing understanding. Hey, maybe in some level she actually does care about what he's going through. And she's, yeah, she's not above using it to get what she wants. Um, but yeah, she just, she knows how to talk to him when she wants to keep him in a certain mental space so that she can make her moves. That's all I got from it. Okay. I, I know, definitely see what you're saying. It's just because of you come straight off the back of the whole eagle fiasco so it's like now you've pushed now she's away specifically by you again um it just kind of felt like okay you 
you're still playing for Bray a little bit here. Obviously, it's not your, on your top of your list, but still quite, it's there. <laughs> Bray is easy to puppet for her, you know? And yes. um, mm. this is an ideal situation where she can puppet him for her to her advantage. Again, she doesn't have any ill will towards him. She's not looking to hurt him. Um, she is going to make sure. She wants the that upper hand. Yeah, she's going to make sure he gets his girlfriend back. She's going to she's going to make sure that his girlfriend is being well taken care of at this point, you know. Yep. Um, so she can afford to be charitable towards him because it's going to work out in her favor for what she's working towards, you know. And uh, she's she's just like, oh, yeah, I can be Jer- I can be nice to him and I'll use that to my advantage as well. Mm hmm. And again, there is probably a sliver of her that does actually feel some sympathy for him. Probably still does care for him in some way. Yeah, you know? in some way. It's just not not romantically in, in, in her mind at the moment. Amber, Amber's back at one, whatever you want to have. Ebony's not stupid. She just knows that the, in this moment, she can get that upper hand. Like, oh, she's I've not, got it now. She's not supposed to be stupid, but the writer sometimes I know, that. I know. So when, it, when she comes to Bray, she tends to do stupid things, right? But that's not what's what's happening. I think she meant it when she told him before. I think it was either him or Amber she said it to. Okay, I get it. You two were freaking long game. I was stupid to try and think I could get in there. Yeah. You know, I I think she realized. I think she was being earnest. For sure. Like, like, okay, I get it. All right. I tried to shoot my shot and you two are apparently magnets. And there's no getting in between you. And everyone is just roadkill on the Bramber Highway of Love. So... (laughs) <laughs> I'm done. Okay, I'm I'm done. I promise. You know, <laughs> it's not worth it. <laughs> I mean, let's remember, Ebony doesn't even really like Bray that much. He's every he's the antithesis of everything she stands for, and she spends most of her time critic criticizing his viewpoint on life and his deeds. Like when she says things about him being in- having integrity and principles, she doesn't say it like she admires him for it. <laughs> You're such a boy scout. He's got nice hair and pretty eyes. Yeah, you know, that's all it is. But the personality, it's not really there. Like she, I think she finally realized this isn't even my kind of guy. I just wanted to be chosen by him. That's what it is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just wanted to beat Trudy, that's all. I wanted to beat Trudy. I just wanted to be his choice. I wanted him to yeah. be enamored of me. And... I couldn't handle it that he didn't choose me, but now I'm starting to realize, do I really want to be chosen by this guy? Come on. I can do better. This is crazy. Like it's easier just to be like his backup dancer. You know what I mean? And and then break off and start my own band. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And she's so bitter about it. She kicks them both out of the city. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, and that's, that was gonna, I was going to bring that up, you know, like, he's so over him that, like, he yeah, just kicks like, them both out, like, go, bye, guys. I got to see you again. I'm yeah. sick of, go be happy someplace Somewhere else. else. yeah. Leave me alone. Jeez, you. Yep. you guys are so friggin' annoying. That's exactly what it is. Oh, you're going to have and a that baby. Was a, nope, see, you got to go. Just that's go. why you know she's still a bit jealous, because you're like, she's like, I thought you want to oh, see yeah, you. Maybe. Get out. <laughs> I don't even think that would have happened <laughs> if they hadn't interfered with her plans. Like, I, again, I don't even think it was about, I'm jealous. I wanted Bray. You got him. I think it was at that point, they were just in her way, you know, like in I the agree, past, yeah. she had, she had tried to do this and also keep Bray by her side. But at this point it was it like, n- I can't do this with you guys here. You're annoying. You're getting in my way. Get out. And go live and be happy someplace else, okay? I'm not going to do anything bad to you. Just go away. Let me have my city, all right? I'm not working with you anymore. Just go. You can take your tribe with you. I'm not even stopping that from happening. Like, just go away. (laughs) Oh, dear. (laughs) Because, I mean, if she was really bitter about Bray, she could have tried to just banish Amber or something like that and keep him or... But she was just like, go, both of you, go play happy families and let me have my throne. Stop interfering with the thing I want. Just leave. I'm sorry. They tried to make that seem like it was such a big deal. And it was just like, it was the best thing that could have happened to you guys. I was going to say, I don't even know why they're, they're staying here. It's just. And the rest of the tribe could have just been like, okay, let's, let's just all leave. Yeah, like, let's just go. It's not like we don't have another tribe we can go to. Amber can always return. She was going to go back to the guy and like, just go, leave, let. 
Ebony have the there's place? There's the Gaians, there's the farm. There's like so yes, many places you can farm. actually yeah. go yeah. and start a new life. Like, come on, do we need to be here in the city? <laughs> but they try to paint it like, oh, it's so tragic. It's like, it's not. <laughs> it's really not. Nobody uh, thinks outside the mall. Pretty much, yeah. Speaking of which, learning that Jack has left the mall, Ellie feels bad for driving him out of his home. Poor Jack, he loved you so much. And now he's out there all alone with a broken heart. So you're not exactly helping. Helping? Jack's gone. We might never see Amber or Trudy again. And you have got everything you wanted. I don't think you're the one who needs the help, Ellie. So yeah, um, how do you feel about Ellie's need to make things right with Jack? And is Celine being hypocritical here? Uh, first one, of course she'd want to make things right with Jack. Just because she doesn't want to be his girlfriend anymore doesn't mean she doesn't care about him as a person. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean she doesn't feel bad for breaking his heart. It's why she struggled with it in the first place. She didn't want to hurt him. She believes he's a good guy. And she was like, why can't I just love him? What happened? I don't understand. You know, and... I don't think that's weird. I think that's like mm -hmm. you. Sh I mean, if you had a normal, it's normal. Yeah, if you had a healthy relationship with somebody, but you just fall out of love with them, you're not looking to destroy that person. Mm -hmm. You just, you just want to no. be out of the relationship, and you're trying to make it as easy on them as possible. I do think that sucks. That when you want to leave a relationship, you have to do all the work to make it easier on the other person. Like you're a bad person. Yeah. But yeah. I, I'm like. Yeah, she cares about the guy. She doesn't want them their their relationship, like their friendship, to be destroyed just because they're not together anymore. She wants to make sure he's okay. She's one of the few people in the mall that actually cares about Jack as a person, you know, and always has cared about Jack as a person. And I mean, her and Dow are the only two people who actually seem to understand Jack and care about him as a human being, rather than if he was useful, you know. Um, uh, and yeah, Celine is totally being a hypocrite. Uh, the audacity to tell somebody that a, a, a cute, go at somebody else for how they treated a good man. And um, that's questionable when it comes to Jack anyway. But like, Celine, do you hear yourself? Especially since you're not, I mean, I think they could have done something with this if like Celine later on admitted that she too had done what Ellie did, or even in this conversation had been like, I've been where you are, Ellie. You know what I mean? And it's not its not good. It only brings disaster when you treat someone like that. I know because I did it to Ryan or something. But just to have her lecturing Ellie about how you're supposed to treat, like, oh, get out of here with that. Like, I... <laughs> when, did Celine, when did Celine go from this recovering Zoe's and Amber that was in crisis? This B word, this mean person, like, and when did she start caring so much about Jack? I will say this in a mild defense for Celine. She is the only one who actually did seem yeah. to care yeah. about what Jack was going through and was trying hard to yeah. help him as much as she could while also not outing Ellie and Luke. Um, of all the people that Jack tried to talk to, she was the most sensitive to the situation and actually did seem to care and was trying to protect uh, Jack's feelings while also being as truthful with him as she could and i will say this i'll say this mild thing she's not wrong in the sense that ellie you're not the one who needs comforting right now that's true given that's true. what everybody's going through like she's not wrong there like ellie wants to be comforted and Celine is like think of what everybody else has lost you actually got what you wanted you got the boy you wanted you're not the one anyone should be feeling sorry for I'm not concerned with making you feel better mm. because Ellie did kind of start that by going, you're not making me feel any better. And Celine's like, really you, uh, Jack's gone. He felt like he had to leave his family's his home because he's so hurt. Uh, we may never see Ray, uh, Amber and Trudy again. So a little girl has lost her mother. A, a man has lost his lover and his would be child. You're the last person that anyone needs to be feeling sorry for right now because you're doing fine. Ellie. Yeah, this sucks, but you're doing fine compared. So I did think she had a, a bit of a point there. She's a little nasty when she says it, but she's not wrong in that. Like, Ellie, nobody really needs to feel sorry for you. I think maybe Celine wasn't the one. Because you feel bad that Jack is hurt. I don't think she was the one. She was not the one that should be having this conversation <laughs> with Ellie because 
She, really, Celine? Really? Yeah. <laughs> like she's she always makes it all about herself. Um, and I, I just it's ah, I can't I can't with either of them. I don't like either of them. So having them both in the <laughs> same room in the same scene is it hurts me. Again, I think this could have worked if this was actually a sign of like some massive growth for Celine of recognizing her own yeah. actions and seeing them in Ellie. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And feeling the sort of disdain you feel when you see someone being the part of yourself that you hated. Yes. And yes. That you regret you were ever that, you know, like if you saw your child following, like you went down a dark path when you were young, you had to learn the hard way. Then you start seeing your kid go through it. And you're just like, there's an anger and a frustration because you already know where they're going and you know yeah, how hard yeah. it's going to be to get out of there. So you might be a little harsher on them. Um, but because it doesn't, they never have Celine ever admit to being that person and the way she treated Ryan or anybody for that matter, um, it does fall flat that she's lecturing Ellie yeah. this way. But they could have done something with it. Yeah, it just adds to the pile on Ellie, the narrative telling everybody Ellie's a horrible person because she didn't love Jack anymore. You know what I mean? That That's the narrative. And I don't, and that's not why I think, you know, and that's not why I dislike her. Oh, I know. I know. I know that that's not, I know that your dislike for Ellie is okay. not tied to Jack. I understand that. But I'm talking about just, this, you know, I, I, it's just, you just don't like her. Like, you just don't like her personality in the same way that I mm -hmm. didn't like Danny. You know what I mean? It has nothing to do with Bray or Amber. Yeah, and, and in this moment, yeah, like this moment, it's 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 how everything happened. Like, what did exactly did she think was going to happen? If Jack ever did come back, I understand she thought he wasn't going to come back, you know. Yeah. But if he ever did, like, she's like, she doesn't think about future consequences of the things that she does sometimes, and that's why I get so annoyed with her. Like, she's still a child, and I have to remember that too. But I think she, I think she assumed that when if Jack came back that things would just fall back into place. She would feel the exact same way she always had. But even even and after everything started with Luke is what I'm talking about. You know, even after that, she thought that, you know. She clearly thought that, you know. And just like, for some reason, Pride clearly thought Amber was going to go <laughs> back to the guy ends for some weird reason. Um, she, yeah, that's why she's so shocked that she doesn't feel the same. And that's when she's forced to realize how much she actually fell for Luke. You know, because um, I think she was still in denial about how she felt for Luke. And that's why she would just say, no, I, I just care about the guy, you know, and really never gave in to her real feelings for him. I think she was in denial about them. And Jack coming back and her not feeling the way she thought she would if she saw him again makes her face that reality of, oh, my gosh, I truly fell for Luke. That's where my heart is. I didn't realize that. And yeah, she's young. You know what I mean? An older person would recognize the temptation or the place they were, but she she clearly didn't see that coming. Poor Jack. I just, they didn't need to make it this way. I just wish they hadn't. I get it. It's for the drama, but I, I just felt like they could have used this. They could have brought their drama in a different way rather than the narrative. Just Ellie, you're Ellie, you're horrible. You know what I mean? Well, we already did the love triangle thing, you know, with Tysan and, and Lex and, and Alice. So we didn't really need it with these guys. And it and they did it better with Lex, Tysan, and Alice. They did. They did. They, did. they didn't. They didn't paint any one of them as some horrible person for the situation they found themselves in. Like the narrative didn't paint Tysan or Lex as terrible people. You know, Lex isn't painted as a terrible person for not loving. Uh, no, for sure. Alice. Uh, and, and Tyson, the narrative does not paint Tyson as a terrible person for being the woman that her friend, you know, crush fell for. You know, um, I think it was sensitive to all three of them in this messy situation. And there are still consequences. It sucks. There are consequences. Friendships, you know, fell apart and stuff like that. I felt like they, they could have done that with Ellie, Luke and Jack, but. That kind of deep writing is gone, 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 gone. Oh, yeah. And yeah. so it's just simplified and messy. And that's that's it. That's all it is. But I mean, if you're here for the, the drama, the scene gives it to you. Jeez. <laughs> the whole episode gives it to you. Everybody's in their feelings. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, speaking of feelings. So after their argument from earlier, Pride returns to argue once again with Bray. Did you ever stop to hear anyone else? 
Or did you know all along that you'd just do it your own way regardless? Because Bray always knows best. Pride, I don't always know best. But I'm the leader around here. And leaders have to lead, whether they like it or not. Even if they're not up to the job? This isn't really about leaders and followers or good and bad decisions, is it? I'm not with you. It's about Amber. Well, of course she comes into it. Because you can't let go, can you? You can't give up after all this time. You can't handle that she loves me, not you. That she's carrying my baby and, oh, don't you wish it was yours? So yeah, um, panel, the fight, um, discuss. Pride, you're pathetic. You're pathetic. Team Bray all the way in this fight. He Team was spewing Bray. back. Yes. He, 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 laid a distra- he laid a diss track on his face and Pride couldn't handle it. Like... <laughs> So, Pride, Pride, you started this. You came at him. Bray made it clear, I don't want to argue with you. I don't want to fight mm. this. I, I already know you don't agree with me. I already know you're mad at me. Nothing can be done about it now. No one could be more mad at me than I am. But Pride wanted to pick a fight. Yeah. And then he had to hear some harsh truth. Sure did, yeah, yeah. And I was really proud of Bray for seeing through the BS and recognizing Pride's problem immediately. He didn't yep. become insecure yep. about, oh, he's like, this isn't about me being a leader. <laughs> this isn't about you really thinking that I always know best, okay? And, and that, it's nothing Pride said was true mm-hmm. about Bray. And Bray just took it all and just did a, an anime move on him. And I was like, yes, yeah, go <laughs> off, Bray. Pride's face. Oh, and he deserved it. He totally oh. deserved it. Oh, gee, still on, still on a temper tantrum. And that's exactly why he deserved it. Oh. It was like, not today. Nope. Mm. Shut that down real quick. I was like, good on you, Bray. Exactly. Yes, he did. Drop the <laughs> mic. And <laughs> they should have let him fight. But uh, Yeah, they should have let him fight. They should have. <laughs> good on Lex, man. Lex is like, I'm, I've got to be your brother. I have to save you because Pride will totally kill you. you. This. I mean... I know Pride would win. <laughs> we know Bray can't Listen, fight. Bray is an eco warrior, okay? Shut up! <laughs> Bray's supposed to be this prized fighter. I don't know. It might, I don't know which way it will go. A street fighter. Yeah. The o- Look, the only fight he ever won was against Ebony, and it's because they were supposed to be sparring. <laughs> And she wasn't actually her. trying to hurt him. Oh, he tried to kill her. That's the only fight he's ever won. All right. He's not a fighter. It's, it's what the writing says. His <laughs> bio tells us he is a warrior, okay? <laughs> total crap. It's total crap. <laughs> he's no. always leading the, the charge yeah, in fights. I mean, it's just what the show tells us. Do we ever get to see him actually fight, though? Or do they just show us everybody else? He leads the charge, and then he goes off to the side like, all right, guys. I'll admit that he's brave and that he's willing to lead into a fight if that's what they're going to do. Doesn't mean he's any good at it. <laughs> he's not any good at it, but Pride would have destroyed him. <laughs> that's why That's why Alexa was like, oh, no, 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 I can't let this happen. He's already been kicked enough. Stop. <laughs> I mean, don't forget, Pride was captured by two kids. So, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought we all agreed he tried to get captured. I thought we all agreed he let them take. His fighting abilities are just as questionable as Bray's. <laughs> Um, yeah, just, can you sympathize with Bray just wanting to leave the mall completely? Oh, yeah. I would have left. 100%. I, I think we should, we should have seen Bray doing that more often, to be honest. Especially how he was. It was supposed to int- have been that, per- that type of. Yeah, you know, just, I need some air. Mm. I need to be where it's less peeply. I need to be where there aren't all eyes on me. Um, and so I, I just, he has had a hell of a year. Him finally just breaking and storming out. I need to get, and he's surrounded by all these judging eyes. Like everybody he's looking at, yeah. he is a hundred percent sure, except for Ty San, that everybody thinks he made a mistake. And even though most of his friends are kind enough not to say that to him, while they're being more comforting, he knows they're all looking at him and thinking it was a bad call, dude. You know, he really does feel wholly responsible for Amber and Trudy's situation. He's the one who screwed it up. And like, I just don't blame him for needing to get away yeah. from all of this. I just need to, I need to, wa- I need to go storm it off somewhere, you know? And I'm surprised it didn't happen sooner, to be honest. He's held it, he held it together so well this season, given everything that happened, everything that continued to happen. Ray really kept his cool this season. And 
He tried. He honestly threw way more tantrums in season two when he was struggling after Amber's death and suddenly finding himself in the, the, the driver's seat. You know, he was always floundering, kind of falling yeah. apart, you know, and but by season three, he was like, I have no choice. I got to knuckle, nut up or shut up and do this. And he really did. It's OK. You're allowed to just finally break, Bray. I'm surprised you didn't do it sooner. <laughs> I really am. Because season three hits you with some. This is not right. It's just not right. <laughs> some of the stuff that happened to you, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. Uh, and seeing the, the the outcast, you know, in the junkyard coming out, that was pretty cool. I liked seeing it. I love seeing the other tribes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, but that poor, was just a nice, Bray. nice bit of foreshadowing that he's going to find trouble. You know, he might be in danger or whatever. And Yeah. But, but you, you told me to get to know Luke. Yeah, to use him, not to fall for him. Oh, well, that would explain how, you know, you fell for Ned, because no one would see him as temptation in a million years. What, he's not exciting enough for you? Not committed any war crimes? Not likely to be lynched. Is that it? You want to know something? I've stopped feeling sorry for Jack. I think he had a lucky escape. So yeah, uh, do you appreciate Luke's attempts to try and help Ellie? And what do you make of the sisters of our argument? Where do I start? (laughs) Okay, yeah, it's nice that Luke recognized Ellie needs someone to talk to. So he goes to her sister and says, you need to talk to your sister. She needs somebody. Mm -hmm. And you're supposed to love her. So go be her sister for Pete's sake. Even if you hate me. You're still her sister. When I'm long gone, she'll still be your freaking sister. All right. Um, so get off your high horse and be her sister. Uh, but again, because of Luke's behavior, um, it feels very much more that it's for his sake in some ways because. Yes. Thank you. He can't handle Ellie's feelings as a free person he is really struggling nope. with ellie being a person who has the freedom to think and feel as she wants and no longer has to tiptoe around her prison guard who could do anything to her if she doesn't play sweet with him um uh even that talk when she's admitting to him that she feels bad about jack and that she needs to do something that she needs to make sure he's okay and that they're on good terms he immediately every time she brings up her feelings he makes it about him and goes straight into a pity party yeah. like well you know i'm the person you could ever be with and so she, what does happen instead of him comforting her and supporting her she ends up having to comfort him and reval reval uh what do you validate him over and over and over again no luke i chose yep. right yep. i love you over and over again and so i can't help but feel that this is a bit selfishly motivated like go tell you talk to your uh, sister yeah. because I'm really scared that she will break up with me if she's sad and realize she made a mistake. Like, I don't want to believe that, but. And he just can't handle her emotions anyway. He just can't handle her. He can't. Yeah. I was just like, you can't handle her because when she was your prisoner, Ellie was very careful with how she behaved around you because she had to. Her life was on the line. So if you guys had a, an argument, she was willing to apologize. She always stayed sweet with you. But now she's not required to do any of that. Your power dynamic is unbalanced. Ellie has all the power. Luke is having a hard time dealing with that. And so, I mean, yeah, it's good that he recognized she needs somebody and to get somebody to be there for her. But uh, you could have been that someone for her, Luke, if you didn't keep making it about you. You should have been that for her. You should have been her support system. But instead, it, um, maybe it's good that Jack left. It, it, it's like, oh, who's it good for? You? I'm sure it is because you feel guilty too. But I mean, I'm not even sure he feels guilty about Jack. No, I, I think don't he's think insecure that's what about Jack. Mm. Yeah, yes. He, yes. He is. He even said it himself. He's no good for Ellie. Jack is the better choice. He's terrified that Ellie will realize that herself. Which is why he keeps bringing it up so Ellie can keep reassuring him. No, 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 no. It's not Jack. I wanted you. It's why he was freaking spying on them during their date. It was right there when she came running out of the room. Okay? Like, come on. He's he's not, like, guilty about Jack. He's insecure about Jack. That's why he's... that, And and he knows that so long as Jack is there in front of everybody else, too, he's never going to... Luke is never going to be in the clear and okay with everyone else, either. It's not just about Ellie. It's the, the public image in general. Like, yeah, and he he's, cares a lot about that. Yes, yes, hundred. So yeah, 
nice supportive partner you are luke but i suppose if you can't be a supportive partner for your your person find somebody who can support them at the very least i guess he just pawns her off and alice 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 <sighs> we want to we want to talk about hypocrites here mm. every, every time i think they can't do something worse with her character they do so kudos yeah. for creativity writers because <laughs> <laughs> you did it she is an unrecognizable person to me at this point i don't know who she is and it is like she and ellie have never been the sort of sisters they were introduced as being it's as if she never cared about her it's as if they've always had a strained relationship and it's all because she herself is insecure about this ned situation and she is yeah. pawning that off on her sister you know like projecting so hard oh she is projecting so hard the what she says to ellie the audacity of Ellie is confessing. Why couldn't I just stay in love with Jack? Why did my feelings have to change? She's being so honest, you know? Yeah, exactly. She's asking a question. Why did these things happen? And instead of being her sister, who explains that, sweetie, you know, you're young and feelings change. You know, you're not a bad person for not loving you know, Jack, but you also can't expect everything to be sparkles and rainbows. You know, this is the consequence. This is what happens when people break up. It can be ugly. Yeah. And Blah, blah, blah. Instead of doing that, which is what a season two Alice totally would have. Instead, she has the audacity to act like you can choose who you love and who you hang out with. And I felt like, here, here's a mirror, okay? Because you have been acting like you couldn't help but fall for Ned as well. Like, it just kind of happened to you. Maybe maybe that's why. You know, maybe that's why she's she acted this way. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, she's just projecting. Yeah. And being such a hypocrite to her sister and being so, it was so it, this fight devolved because of Alice. Like she started this and it, For sure. she did it. She did this before. And the way she tells her, like, you know, you choose who you love. Like, really? Is that the case? Because you've always said, I, I just tend to fall for the wrong guy. So you purposely chose the wrong guy. Yep. You purposely chose guys who are dill holes and treat you like crap. That's what you do, Alice. And then you feel sorry for yourself. Every time. Come on. Like, that doesn't even make sense, Alice, that you were telling her this because you want to blame her. And also, you can't even tell me that she's mad for Jack's sake because when Jack came to her for advice, she didn't give a damn to help him. No, not at all. I don't believe you care. I don't believe this is for Jack's sake that you're upset. Like... I get if you're upset that your sister fell for this prison guard, but the fact that you are running from any responsibility for why this happened, because Zilly's like, you told me to come on to this guy. You told me to, to, to seduce him. She's like, yeah, I told you to lead him on. I didn't tell you to fall for him. Like, it's that simple. You kept pushing her into Luke, even when Ellie didn't want to do it anymore. Even when he was getting too close to home, you kept pushing her and guilting her into it. And now you have the audacity to gaslight her to her face that she did this to herself. Screw you, Alice. I, you are not the Alice I loved. You are a completely different person. When I say I love Alice, it's not you because you ain't her. Right. I'm sorry. I, that, I just, it got me a little angry. <laughs> ah! There are so many ways you can call Ellie out without this. You can call Ellie out. You totally can. You can be like, girl, what did you expect to happen? Of course, Jack's hurt. Of course, he felt he had to leave home. But Ellie's doing that to herself. So nobody else has to. Ellie accepts that. She's the one saying it. I gave him no choice. What did I expect to happen? She just wants freaking comfort of how to deal with this, how to fix it. She doesn't need anybody else to say that. You know what I mean? So, okay, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. <laughs> Again, it's just the narrative. It's the narrative that has everybody attacking her like this. And, <sighs> I deplore, I deplore lazy storytelling. I really do. And I have no respect for writers who can't treat their char uh, characters fairly. Then you shouldn't be doing it. You shouldn't be in the game. They, they could have just made Luke the bad guy. Isn't it convenient that he's not, you know? Isn't it convenient that the narrative has plenty of people, you know, like, there's not, he's not being attacked on all fronts by people. And if he was, he no. actually does deserve it. You know what I mean? There's a sure. good reason for why people would attack him. Oh, uh, no, it's Ellie. Ellie's the terrible person here. I don't understand how we got here. When they started the Luke and Ellie relationship or situationship, they seem to have such a good understanding of trauma bonding and Stockholm Syndrome. Like they actually handled it really mm -hmm. well. So I don't understand how we could be here and now they want to pretend those weren't the circumstances. 
of how this relationship formed, that they want to once again pretend and airbrush what came before and pre- act as though the audience doesn't remember what they watched and behave as though this relationship started under normal circumstances. Like she and Luke just were in the same spinner, spinning class or something. And that's how they fell for each other. You know, um, they keep doing you, that though. Yeah. They keep scrubbing yeah. past events that we've been set up and seen and then giving us something. I, I, yeah. I, yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Pride went from being engaged to Amber to there was nothing between us to clearly angry where it's like there was something you guys were obviously really tight if you had something going on or you would not be this upset you know like stop doing this it, it's not an etch a sketch we have evidence of what happened it's a tv show <laughs> it's archived yes like, do you think uh, i mean it doesn't even make sense is it because they're trying to get like new audience in and they just didn't think that we watch it back so they just wanted to dumb it down and simplify every storyline that had come before i don't know it's just uh, it's just it's weird la- to me it's <laughs> a lack of it's a lack of care uh, it's also a lack of responsibility for what you committed to yeah and it's throwing whatever at the wall it's a sign of desperation to keep the audience watching. It's the constant jingling of keys to keep the audience watching. I don't know what the ratings were at the time. Series three is very obvious. It's very clear that they they just keep doing this. It it just, it feels like once again, they they feel like we're dumb and we're not going to care. We're not going to remember. We're not going to notice, you know, the inconsistencies. It's just, it's, it just feels like they think we're dumb. I mean, I know that we live in the age of streaming. And now we're used to, we expect way more consistency in our programming Mm. because we can watch an entire season. We can binge it out in a day, a week, depending how long the show runs for or whatever. Um, So we definitely expect consistency and the writers know that. But back in the day, you didn't have to be as straight. You didn't have to be that stringent on those kind of things because there was no archive. I mean, TV shows being put on DVD didn't even happen until the the aughts you know um so i can understand some things being forgotten by the wayside like what year these people got married it was just a line that got dropped in season three of cheers and then in season seven they changed the year like i understand those kind of things that the writers can't keep up with and the audience isn't going to care if they find that out and it's more just pop culture fun trivia to realize oh my gosh fraser's kid should actually be this age because mm. blah 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 but it doesn't actually like affect the fundamental plot of the show or the characters um this is lazy though this yeah, stuff like these aren't like, small dls <laughs> right like for example in the show when the tribe started there are some inconsistencies about was Trudy ever with the Locos? What does it mm. mean she ran away from Zoo and Bray saved her? At the end of the day, none of that actually matters. You know, those are trivia details, but they don't fundamentally change what we're seeing and the relationships you have. You know, at the end of the day, Trudy just didn't want to be with Zoo and Bray was like, I'll take care of you, blah, blah, blah. Like, it doesn't really matter if she joined the Locos and then ran away. It, none of that actually matters. It's just something they didn't iron out and... Who cares? But this stuff, this is just basic writing to, you know, like, a, like an essay you write in college, you wouldn't be able to pass this in. Okay. It wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't fly with your instructor. They'd be like, what is this? this and is it's weird. not like this happened, didn't happen. This is not like this happened seasons ago. This happened what? <laughs> Within the season. 10, 15 <laughs> episodes back. Like, come on. <laughs> exactly. Like you can just go back and look at what you did. <laughs> You know, and what you've established. But they and don't. How many writers do we have this season? We only seem to cycle through less than four. I was going to say, there's, yeah, there's not a many. Like, there's only it's a certain group. It's like, I and understand they, why is this so bad? Are they just, they don't, they don't collaborate. They aren't, they aren't right. watching the episodes. What's happening? Uh, like, it literally cycles through them. Mm. They just take turns. Sometimes they might right, have a couple in a row or whatever. But yeah, it's like you said, Maggie. They are not talking to each other about this. They're not bothering to look at each other's work to make sure it's consistent. Like it's, it's just no I don't notes anywhere. I don't know. Yet. I don't want to make accusations, <laughs> but it's like the captain of the ship every day just decides a new direction, and the writers are like, oh, "I guess this is where we're rowing." But weren't we going? No, it doesn't matter where we were going because the captain has decided 
this is what I want this week. It feels like that. This is fun. This is fun. Mm. And they write it because that's the direction the captain wants to go in this week. So what you have is a vessel that is literally just going in circles. And I'm at the point where I'm like, pirates, mm. I just want pirates. <laughs> and they've got Jack Sparrow's compass is what's happening. <laughs> it's wherever they most desire. Take the ship and burn it into the sea. <laughs> season four can't come soon enough because at least I won't expect anything oh good from season four. I won't. I'm just like, let's just bring it. I'm just ready for the chaos now. At least it's... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> let's, whatever. Let's do it. Pew, pew. <laughs> at least season four's got lasers. <laughs> if you're going to jingle keys, let's jingle some we keys. We got a okay? lot of shiny things for you kids. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Lasers, computers, airplanes, the whole lot. Season four is definitely turn your brain off, okay? (laughs) (laughs) I will. You have the internet. (laughs) Oh, man. But that brings us to our final thoughts of the episode. I know you kidnapped Amber and Trudy. I saw you leave the note, and I followed you to where you got them stashed away. You and I, we're going to become partners. What do you want about? Well, it's simple. From now on, things are going to be done my way. So yeah, I know no one was surprised at this, but yeah, what were your thoughts at the ending? Ebony, take him for a ride. I'm so sick of him. Get him. I get him. Get him. I'm I'm just like I'm excited <laughs> for what she's gonna put him through because I'm just especially in this episode, and um there are so many moments in this episode with his behavior. I, all of a sudden Alice is a trad wife. You guys realize that? Um Oh god. Yeah. I'm, how how come you didn't wake me up to make you food? Are you? She can't cook. We know this. Oh my god! Oh I hate god. that. Sorry. Yeah. This man woke you up at a dead sleep. He is being shady as hell in this entire episode, and not a single red flag goes up for you. How desperate are you for attention and love, Alice? Ugh! You ought to be ashamed of yourself. No self-respect whatsoever. But anyway, um, Ned is such a tool. All these chances to give him. He more really is. Just- He's such a tool. They'll give him like this one instant where I'm like, okay, see, there's the potential I was telling you guys about. And then boom, right back to just the worst human being ever. Mm. And and don't get me wrong. Bevan is acting it well, like his panic at the note and his freaking out because he doesn't know how this happened. The only way this could happen is if somebody was on to him and switched the note, like he's obviously playing that well. Um, But it doesn't make me feel bad that Ebony's about to screw him so hard. Mm. Oh, not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. Because at this point, I'm like, you you deserve this. You haven't shown an ounce of sympathy, guilt, empathy for what you're doing to people, what you've done to these young women. Um, Oh, and how about how far he was able to get them away from the mall? (laughs) Did did he have a wheelbarrow? How did he do this? Quite far in it, yes. <laughs> up those stairs. Can you imagine him carrying them up those stairs? Like, come on. Like, this is ridiculous. How did he even find this place? It's not like Ned left them all after the Chosen were defeated uh, to seek this out. Mm-hmm. So he's had this secret place all this time. and With a key and with everything. The key, like, yeah. <laughs> give me a break. Like, whatever. Uh, I'm like, Ebony... Yeah, spank him. Spank him hard. <laughs> here's here's a baseball bat with nails in it. Have at it. I was just like, oh, finally someone competent can take over this kidnapping. <laughs> yes! <laughs> right, for sure. At least someone we trust to do it right. <laughs> right, at least now I know Amber and Trudy will be okay. <laughs> yeah. We'll get actual demands and places and times and <laughs> notes, at least. <laughs> I am surprised that now, again, Ned was very straightforward. This is a very simple trade kind of kidnapping. I want the guardian and then I'll give you the girls back. And it's clear that's all Ned intended it to be. Of course, he didn't think through how he was going to be able to do this without getting caught, but whatever. Very simple. Kidnappers, that's what they were demanding. Give us the guardian and then you can have the girls back. Okay. Why didn't anybody, I, again, I understand Bray not being able to see past this letter where suddenly the notes, the kidnapper says, all bets are off. You're never going to see them again. Um, I understand Bray not being able to think past that. But how is it nobody else thought that was weird swerve for these people who clearly had wanted the Guardian to suddenly not care about the Guardian anymore and decide to keep the girls? That's a weird pivot for a kidnapper. It is, but maybe it's not that they, like, they just, they're going to get girls and try to find another way to do it. 
but it, I don't know. I mean, they were just biding time. It was just a it was fa- false threat, you know, and then they're going to send another note. I don't know, Ebony, who knows? But yeah, I didn't feel an ounce of sympathy for Ned this episode. And because uh, Sabine isn't here and I don't have to respect how she feels about Ned and Alice, <laughs> I didn't have to try and find a bright spot in Ned or Alice. <laughs> Um, <laughs> no. See, I love, I love you, Sabine. I work very hard <laughs> for you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm just like Ebony. Give him hell. Mm-hmm. Ride him hard and put him away wet. As I am so sick of him. I. Ooh. She's the perfect person to do it to. Like, mm-hmm. Perfect. She is gonna make you wish you'd never gotten this harebrain scheme. <laughs> Especially since you weren't even motivated and you weren't even motivated enough to ever do this in the first place. Yeah. Not, e- not even. He just he thought it would be so simple, and that's his, and that's and that's what makes it you know so net. Like he, this is it. He was just like, oh, this is how they do it in the movies. He, like, <laughs> you have somebody give a ransom note, you give what you want. But we still don't even know what he wants at this point. Like, what he, what did he really want? The Guardian want by doing this? You know, like, for what reason? Problem, not revenge. You know, like Ned. No, we're not looking for, for that again. That, that that upper hand. You know, that upper hand over. Oh, I've got him now. So I'll have to listen to me. Like, I just, I think he's, he's a lot like KC and, and Lex where they used to just look for the next score. And that's what Ned's doing. That, we don't really get to find out, do we? Nope. No. <laughs> it wasn't thought out. I mean, granted, it makes sense that Ned wouldn't think it out. Um, <laughs> but yeah, maybe. Exactly, I'd, exactly. I'd sell him to somebody. But again, how are you going to do any of this without getting caught, you idiot? <laughs> you didn't even change your clothes. Like, uh, um. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, granted, don't get me wrong. I don't think Ned should die for any of this. Like, the way he dies is awful. No. He definitely deserves to be put through the paces. And I'm I'm just like, yes, torches and pitchforks for him. Because what he did was just awful. And again, he wasn't highly motivated to do it in the first place. Like, if the Guardian had done something terrible to him, then I'd at least be able to empathize with his anger at wanting revenge on this person. Or if he had lost one of his siblings, something the Guardian had done anything if he'd been in the mines you know like i would at least be able to understand why he wanted to see this guy pay but nothing happened to ned nothing happened to the twins so this was an an unmotivated crime against these two women you took a pregnant woman you took a a mother okay (laughs) for what for what you know Mm -hmm. i what did you want to see happen to the guardian and why did it matter so much to you i so yeah, Ebony, give him hell. And he put his hands on my Casey. He put his hands on my Casey. Casey oh, is- sure Ooh. did. He did, yes. <laughs> and I said, Casey is literally raising your brother and sister right now. Mm-hmm. How he is he's taking freaking- care of them? I- How dare you put your hands on my Casey, my precious boy? <laughs> <laughs> How? How did we end up dare you, Casey? You know, like uh, such a little, a little craphead. You know, heard just came in. Now it's like, don't, don't even get him sideways. <sighs> I, I can't believe Alice would put up, put up with his behavior in this episode and not think, you know what? I think I fell for the wrong one again. Like of all the things she's seen, the, she's blinded. Like when I think of like the ratio of crap to nice with Ned, <laughs> every time it's like, you want me to believe she would love this guy to the point where she's like, you should wake me up to feed you. Oh, stop. <laughs> Okay, she's sleeping in his bed. Ew! (laughs) Are you kidding me? You want me to believe that, but this is how you have him continually (laughs) wake me up to feed you. Oh my god! What? Uh, Oh, that line! I swear. (laughs) Yeah, no. Mm. Got no got no words for it. Look how they massacred my boy. Like I just. Oh, and you know, there are times when they've actually, sh- that was part of the story, showing how falling for somebody can be a bad influence on you. We saw how Lex was a bad influence on Zandra and her personality yeah. in season one, yeah. you know, but, but that was sort of part of the point and how she had to break free of that after he finally broke her heart and abandoned her. And you get to see Zandra getting like restoring herself because Zandra wasn't a cruel person. She was selfish. She was a bit of an airhead, lived in her own world. She was young, too. But she wasn't mean, and she wasn't cruel until she got with Lex. 
and he was rubbing yeah. off on her. But that was sort of the point that they were trying to show you, you know, but with Ned and Alice, it's just she was doing what she thought he liked. Right. You know, and he gave her he gave her permission to be just the worst kind of person. You know what I mean? Like, um, but with Alice, yeah, and, yeah. Alice and Ned, there doesn't seem to be any point. He just literally ruins her. He just makes her worse. Yeah, like, why Why couldn't she make him better? Right. Like she did with Lex. And they try to pull that out. They try to pull it out at the bottom of the ninth. But it's like, you've already done too much damage. I, you, I, already, you already messed I, up. Yeah, I no longer buy that Ned could be better. You could have told that story where he's, you know, a tool, but falls in love and actually wants to be a better person because of her influence he wants to be better for her mm. but they didn't tell that story realizes he messed up you know and confides in her what do we show some like, some guilt some remorse, remorse. or anything yeah. yeah like ah i never thought it would get like this and uh, it's like no you, you you won't it won't work when they decide to pull that whole ned suddenly wants to give alice a great life and stuff like you oh. told the wrong <sighs> story and you're it's lost it's gone so in short, this was a hard episode to get through. I just wanted it to be over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is when I was like, wait, Jack is gone again. No! <laughs> <laughs> no, Jack! <laughs> you left us with these people. I thought you were just going for a walk. <laughs> I just thought you needed some fresh air. <laughs> Luke, you should leave. Get out. Speaking of that, okay, that's another thing that annoyed me in this episode everybody's having to go at Ellie because it's her fault that Jack left. Um, you guys care so little about Jack that Ellie had to discover he was gone. Not a one of you decided to check up on him. <laughs> you didn't even it's notice true. he was no longer in the building. Do not pretend to me that you're mad at Ellie because Jack left. Because you didn't care. Like, she discovers he's gone. Mm -hmm. They all know they haven't seen him. And not a single one of them was like, I'm going to go. Especially when they had Ellie and Luke announced their relationship that morning, mm -hmm. like at breakfast. Okay. And it's like lunch by the time Ellie's like, I'm going to go to his room and talk to him. <laughs> These people knew since breakfast that Jack wasn't around. Like they hadn't seen him and they knew, oh, Ellie and he broke up. Not a one of them decided to check up on their friend and see if he was okay. Like Celine, you seem really upset at Ellie. Why didn't you bother to check on Jack if you care so much? She doesn't. Like, none of you did. So you can just take that BS about feeling so bad about Jack because none of you have shown that you actually care about mm -hmm. him to realize he packed his stuff and left. <laughs> Ellie cared. Aww. She went and checked on him. Not you guys. You're all talk. All of you. All talk. The Guardian gets checked on more than Jack did since he's been home. <laughs> That's so bad. Seriously, mm -hmm. Jack shouldn't leave just because of Ellie. He should leave because all of his friends suck. <laughs> his real friends, yes. his, his only true friend is dead. Just go live a better life, Jack. That's so oh man. He, he checked all that way, you know. And and uh just for that crap. And see, again, it wouldn't bother me so much if they weren't just all just like oh, all of them were like, oh my gosh, poor Jack, poor Jack. Like, I get it. Jack wasn't the best friend to anybody, even Dal and Ellie. He was pretty terrible to them, too. But I'm just going to say, if you're going to pretend oh. you care so much that he's left, then you need to show that you actually cared, okay? You don't get to pull that out of your hat and be like, oh my gosh, poor Jack, I can't believe it, I'm, I feel so bad. And it's like, no, you don't. No, you don't. Oh, mm -hmm. Fake. Fake news. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. That brings Series 3, Episode 41 to a close. Thank you very much to our panel. And if you'd like to take part in a future episode of the podcast, or even to send us a message, you can contact us by sending us a message on our Facebook page, on our website, or on Instagram. Just search for The Tribe, The UK, or Conversations on Eagle Mountain. So we'll see you next time for Episode 42. Until then, bye. Bye. Bye.